Hey, it's Tim here for Tim O Paints. Today we're gonna pressure wash this house. So I'm gonna show you guys the tools that I like to use and the way that I like to go about uh, getting a house ready for paint. So stick around and don't go anywhere. This is just a house and all we're really doing is rinsing off the house. We're, we're not really getting into um, stripping or anything. You know, the, the trim and the fascia and everything does need a little bit of dressing. Uh, but we're gonna roll along with the, the small pump here today. It's a new one, so we got some oil in and ready to go. 2800, we got a couple tips. Uh, if we use the zero tip, it gets us up to 2800, but uh, I think that's pretty excessive. If, if anything, if we do end up using a 2800 PSI, we're gonna be hitting the top peak and trying to do that from the four foot ladder. That way we can avoid getting on the road. All right, so let's get into it. I'm gonna show you guys how I like to pressure wash a house before I paint. And you know, it's pretty gonna be pretty warm today, but I don't think that we're gonna be able to prepare it, but this will be a three or four part series on how to paint a house, um, beginning to end, you know, pressure wash, prepare, um, and paint, and then, you know, the whole process. So it'll be about three or four part video, and as always, you know, I'll have a paint job recap, a time lapse walkthrough about how the job went and everything, so. All right, I hope you guys enjoy this one. Let's do this. So one thing I wanted to mention before we get started and get too far into the washing process is when you do have to move stuff, if there's a lot of stuff and they have like a lot of patio furniture now what i like to do is i'll get out my phone and take a small picture that way when i do have to put everything back together i have a picture to refer to i um, mean you know, a lot of people spend a lot of time getting their patio set up the way they like it and if you could uh, help them out by making sure it goes back to exactly the way you found it then hey you know that's another one up in the book you know every little point counts now i'm not using any kind of special um, tips or attachments or extensions or anything. This is the cheapest gas powered pressure washer from Lowe's. I think this ran about $249 or so. And I'm not using anything special. It's right out of the box, ready to go. I'll probably start off with the 40, the 40 tip and this is the white. This white tip's a 40 degree tip. This is the way to gauge the pressure. Now, you'll get about 2000 PSI with this tip here. And with the black tip is for soap. And then that doesn't go above 300 PSI. Now the yellow one here, it's a 15. You'll be able to put out 1.9 gallons per minute and you'll have a little higher pressure. So as the as the PSI goes up, the rate, the gallons go, goes lower, if that makes any sense. Okay, so we're gonna get started. These are probably be my two primary tips that I use is the white one and the yellow one, and that's 2,500 PSI and uh, 2,000 PSI. The white one puts out 2.1 gallons per minute and the yellow does 1.9 per minute. So today we're not gonna be using soap or any kind of detergent or surfactant for this material because the house is fairly clean. We just need to rinse it off. Uh, we live in a highly agricultural area. It's very windy lately, um, even though it's been hot. So there is a lot of dust buildup, especially on the stucco. And this is some chunky stuff, so we will be back rolling. Real quick time saver, before you put a tip on or even before you fire up the pump, something that I like to do to make sure that there's no air bubbles or no kind of debris inside of the line is I just run it out with no tip. So I, so I just like to run it through, cycle the water through, and that lets all the air bubbles and junk out. Something I want to address before we get too far is that whenever you're doing around the windows and the doors and like light fixtures and stuff, those are the type of things you really want to give yourself some distance because if you get too close to that, you can cause some damage and we don't want that. Yeah, just want to let you guys know that. All right.
Real quick pro tip before you guys leave, if you are running the pressure washer, make sure to keep the trigger pulled because if you let it run without water running over it, it can heat it up and do some damage. So thanks a lot for sticking around. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the thumbs up. All right guys, day two. Today is gonna be filling in all of these little cracks that we have in the fascia and in the stucco. We're gonna be using uh, different types of caulking. So we got our caulking guns out. When I'm doing any type of caulking, I like to wear gloves. Um, I have these gloves, they have like, they're like dipped. So they have like an orange coating on the bottom. Um, the reason I like these is to protect your finger. Again, there's all kinds of chemicals in this stuff. When I do caulking, I like to keep it like a smooth, like nice and smooth. And um, so what I do is I keep a sponge or a wet rag with me. And every time I have any kind of excess caulking or material on the glove, I just wipe it off. And then every time you put your finger down, make sure you have a clean finger every time you put your finger down. Two different types of caulking guns that I really like to use. And they're these here. This one's a little more pricey. Uh, this one's a lot easier to pull on. It's, uh, it's like more, uh, what's the word, what's the word, ergonomic. <laughs> So anyways, but it's hard to get in tight spots. This rod like sticks out way far. And if you guys are interested in any of these tools, I'll leave links down in the description for you guys down below. This one here is a dripless. What it does is that when you, you go, it kind of lets off and it doesn't drip. So, cause what happens if you use these cheaper ones, if you get ones like this that has this little trigger on the back, just know that every time you're done caulking, you're gonna have to hit that trigger and it really takes up a lot of extra time. And painting is all about time. You just want to save time and you want to get it done right. So. That's the job today. A lot of sanding and a lot of caulking in and a lot of putty and a little bit of demo. So, oh yeah, stick around and don't go anywhere. So day two, what I really like to focus on is getting all the prep work done. After we've washed it, we'll come through and all these little imperfections and stuff like this, I wanna go ahead and caulk in that area. It's a little bad. Typically you could do um, a stucco treatment, but you know, we offered him two options and he picked the option with it. We're just gonna use elastomeric caulking. And what it is, it's like a stretchy type of caulk. However, on some of these areas here, these styrofoam pop out, corbels, I guess you could call them. They're pretty damaged around here. The birds like to peck at them and pull the styrofoam out. So these things, we're gonna have to do a little bit of stucco patch. Now around the whole house, there is a bunch of areas like that. The peak of the house as well. There's always a seam of wood. I always like to caulk that and hammer in any kind of nails that you run into. We're gonna cruise around and I'm gonna show you kind of the stuff that we need to repair today. On day two, so we got big holes like this as well. There's a lot of cracks in the stucco. A lot of cracks here, I use a material that uh, fills the crack and there's a high build and a high fill. It's called multi-seal. These need to be removed. All the nails on the wall will be removed. A lot of this stuff, you don't have to caulk in this type of stuff. You really don't. However, it really does help as far as quality and aesthetics go. Um, the areas that you'll want to focus on priming to, to protect are areas like this, anywhere where rain can run off and get inside. So these are the areas that we really want to work on. Here, we're going to have to do some sanding. As you can tell, there's a little bit of mold and stuff. We'll go ahead and caulk that in too. This is the type of crack I was explaining to you earlier. That crack there is a crack that I could use on this material that I'm gonna show you guys. So everything today is gonna get sanded down. We'll caulk in all of these cracks. If this was siding, you don't really wanna to do too much caulking on the siding because the siding needs to move. It needs to move and swell with the material. It needs to breathe. Let's get after it. All right, so after we got started, the homeowner asked us if we could tear down the shed. So we went ahead and charged him a little bit extra to remove that. Um, I had a couple helpers this day, so it really worked out. Also, if you guys are interested in how I estimate all of my jobs, I did create an ultimate estimating guide and I'll leave a link down in the description below if you guys are interested in that. This stuff here, you're able to use in a crack like this. See, I can fit my whole knife in there. I'm not gonna be able to use the multi-seal. Multi-seal is a product that I could use for small hairline cracks. This is that product. And that will work, but this crack is a little bit. What we're gonna do is we're gonna use this stuff. Mortar and stucco repair, more flex. All right, let's go. So I don't use this stuff that often. Usually I'll use a sanded stucco repair. You mix it up in a bucket and apply it with a trowel. But these cracks weren't too bad and most of them are hairline cracks. So I decided to use this. We opted in for the cock and gun method and it turned out pretty nice, I think. Just trying to get it, make sure that it's inside of the crack. And then what we're gonna do is we mush it down in there with the sponge like that. You want to make sure that it's nice and filled. It's hard to get the caulking in there, so you've really got to mush it. And mush it in there. And then you use the sponge to lightly kind of uh, feather it into the rest of the stucco. And now let me show you how it looks. 
All right, so we're going to move out to the front. Um, I think it looks pretty good. You guys let me know what you think in the comment section. I think it feathered out pretty good. And once we get a coat of paint on there, you won't really be able to tell. So now we're out front. And these little corbels here, man, these suckers were really tore up. And like I said, sometimes I'll use a sanded and apply it with a trowel. But we were going for the caulking gun method. And I'm really I'm really satisfied with how it turned out, to be, to, to be quite honest with you. We did some caulking. Did some caulking and it nicer than it did. And this will make our paint job look better once it's all done. So we still have to do there. A couple little holes to fill. But we have several spots where we had to do some stucco patch. You know, we tried to make it blend as best as we can. Unfortunately, stucco patch is really hard to make match. And if you know the holes were there, then you'll know the holes were there even after they're patched. We threw drops down and we have shields tucked all the way up against to the foundation. And anywhere it gets hairy, where the drops can't really get, you button it up with uh, paper tape. You guys got anything to say? Work hard, stay in school. Stay in school. <laughs> it's hot. <laughs> Work indoors in the summertime. All right, guys, day three today is going to be finish up the sanding that we started yesterday and then also finish up some of the caulking out front. It's been a hun over 100 degrees the last couple days, so today we're going to work on staying in the shade. We're going to do our best to work in the shade. I got plenty of water to start the day off with. We got Eddie here helping us today, but we have all of our cracks filled, all of our stucco repair done. We sanded down. We went a little extra on the sanding in this back patio area because, well, this is kind of where they hang out. They have a pool area. So we wanted to make sure that everything was nicely sanded. Uh, we left off the caulking at the end of the day. We still have some more to do. We're gonna chase the shade for most of the day here, which means work in the front area. And then once the shade's gone, we're gonna hop back here and start doing some painting, guys. Ooh, it's already hot, guys. It's already hot. And it is Friday. So once we get that done, take a couple days off and we'll come back out front. Now, the reason I'm gonna start in the back is because I don't really want to leave half of the house painted over the weekend since I'm not gonna be here through the weekend. So if I know that that's gonna be the case, typically what I'll do is I'll start in the back. We'll get the back painted. That way we get the majority of it done and then come back over Monday and they don't have like a half painted house over the weekend because I don't know, that just bugs me. So day three, a little bit of painting, finishing up wrapping, or a little bit, uh, you know what I'm trying to say, let's go. All right guys, hey, thanks so much for sticking around to the end of the video. Here's some clips from the next episode. Next episode, we will be painting. Uh, I don't know if I'll have all the painting in there, but we probably got about one, maybe two episodes. Thanks guys for sticking around, and we'll see you in the next video. Peace. All right, guys, day four, it's about 6.30. We gotta pick up some more paint. Well, we actually don't need paint, <laughs> more tape. So we need more tape, so we're headed out to go get more tape. Now we're gonna go work, and it's supposed to be 108 degrees today. Oh my God! All right, so now we're working our way to the front. And the reason we didn't do wrap the entire house and spray the entire body in one day, well, was because uh, it was a Friday and we took the weekend off. So now we're back on Monday. We got the lights down because uh, a good thing to keep in mind is to take the lights down because you never know down the road they might get some new lights and they might not necessarily be shaped the same as the old lights. So, you know, you'll have the old color coming through. Do them a favor, pull the lights down. Same goes for the downspouts. Pull the downspouts down because it'll never get painted behind there and it just can cause problems down the road. So I like to pull all the house numbers off and I pull the lights off and we pull all the downspouts off. Now, nowadays, especially more than ever with like Amazon and FedEx and stuff, I like to take the numbers down and what I do is I'll put them on a piece of cardboard and then stand the cardboard up against the house. That way if FedEx, Amazon Prime, anybody has any confusion about the address, it's right there and it won't be my fault if the package doesn't get delivered. All right, so we're gonna throw some drops get this front ready, and then we're gonna start shooting some paint, guys. Woo! I actually got all of this painted yesterday. 
Um, they actually made some changes. We're gonna actually paint this stuff here white all the way around and these poles white here as well. So yeah, it's looking pretty good. Oh, look who it is. Hey. He's here, ready to go. So before we get too far, we gotta get these windows wrapped. I'm using six foot plastic, inch and a half production frog tape. This stuff is a really good for outside. It's a high adhesive and it won't really damage anything. It can damage some stuff, but it's perfect for taping off these metal windows. Try to get the rest of the house painted today, so we'll see how it goes. What do you think, Eddie? Think we can do it? Absolutely. Absolutely, look at that positivity, I love it. So I really needed help on this day and my buddy Eddie really came through for me. He hit me up, he saw in one of my videos that I needed help and we grew up together. We actually went to elementary school together and he hit me up and said, hey man, I have some experience. If you need some help, I'll come out and give you a hand. And I really did need the help because today was over about 108 degrees around. It was over 100 degrees today and I needed to get the whole front of the house done. Now, if I was rolling solo, I would have been able to get the whole front of the house wrapped but the issue is the sun would have been in the front of the house and then I wouldn't have been able to paint. So he really came through. So Eddie, if you're watching this, thank you so much for coming through and helping me get all this ready. Now that we got the garage all wrapped, I actually had to cut a hole in the plastic because they were inside. They needed to pull the, the car out. So I had to pre-prime this fascia. It was super dry. And uh, yeah, now we're starting to ready to get paint. Let's go. All right, guys, the sun is like peaking up. So I hope this shot's going to look all right. We're going to start right here. What I have, big back roller, I got a one inch nap, it's a purdy, uh, six to eight, but you could use a four to eight too. I uh, probably won't need to extend this. And we're using a 515 Graco Rack X tip. I probably should be using a bigger tip for this particular job, but I don't have one with me and I'm just, I'm ready to go. So we're gonna go and we're gonna use the setup that I got. Graco PC Pro 595. All right, we're rolling solo right now. First day we pressure washed. Second day we had two helpers. Uh, third day we had a helper and then today we had a helper for half a day But the painting process is pretty much gonna be OMC one-man crew So we're gonna get it done and we're gonna make it look good and we're gonna move on to the next one So stick around you guys you're gonna enjoy this if at any moment you guys are curious at the type of equipment I'm using or you missed it I always leave links in the description below so you guys can go ahead and click that check it out and If you do buy something I do earn like 60 cents. So uh, I appreciate that 60 cents goes a long way around here. So Let's get it. Let's let's start painting. Let's do this Oh yeah, dude, I know I always do this, right? I'm like, oh yeah, we're gonna get started. And then I'm like, oh yeah. Always protect yourself, guys, as much as you can. Sometimes you can get away with it, but don't try to get away with it. And the podcast. All right, starting to warm up. So we're gonna try to get at least the front of the house done and we're gonna have to call it quits because when it gets super, super, super hot, man, you can't really paint. Look, I'm already getting sunburned. Oh gosh. Okay, I'm gonna put you over back on the tripod so we can get going. So we can get out of this heat before it gets too bad. guys um it is way too hot so we're gonna wrap it up we started cleaning up it's about 4 30 so tomorrow we had to stop right here at the corner i'm just getting way too hot and we're having issues our pumps clogging up and we're having some issues with the equipment and i honestly think it's just because it's a little too hot so this is what we got left this wall and then to the corner and then we should be all wrapped up with the spring psych we got to do the top gable areas and i'll show you what i mean right now check it out we got most of it done it's just too hot boys and girls we'll hop up we'll do these top gable areas tomorrow first thing in the morning and uh it'll, it'll be nice it'll be nice and i hate leaving houses like this halfway painted but sometimes you know you gotta do what you gotta do 
hey guys so thanks so much for watching next episode will be the final episode of this series uh, we'll be finishing up painting the outside of this house so if you made it this far don't forget to give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already and i'll see you guys in the next video peace Today we're going to get the rest of this body painted and then uh, we're going to work on some putting some white up. So I'm going to bring you guys along for that process. So this house has never been painted so it has to be back roll. So alright, stick around and don't go anywhere. Welcome back to the channel. If this is your first time here, my name is Tim and this is The Timo Show. And today is the fourth and final episode of my How to Paint a House series. And this project, we're getting really close to wrapping it up. We're almost finished. We just need to finish spraying the body, which has been a little bit daunting just because the weather has been super hot. So we've only been able to work kind of short days. And today is the fourth day. Do this garage door here. So what I like to do is I drop a, I put a canvas drop down. And then what I'll do is when I drop the garage door down, it'll land right on top of this. Then the next step is I like to tape off this black weather stripping area with some tape. So we're going to do that. They added in these white, corbels everywhere to try to break up the blue because there was quite a bit of blue so we ended up doing some extra white and then they wanted the, the front door to be red but we're actually going to do the front door yellow so i'm not exactly sure if we're going to get that to that today but we're going to try our best so that's the plan guys all right checking back with you guys a little bit so anytime i'm doing stuff like this i always make sure to keep a duster with me and by duster i just mean like an old busted paintbrush <laughs> just keep that in your back pocket also i like to keep a putty knife this is just a regular old putty knife. A five in one, two is really great to have on you at all times. And then the razor knife. That's the three things you want to have. So what we're going to do is we're going to put some tape right here on this. I like to use this orange frog tape. You could use any kind of tape. Uh, blue tape, however, probably wouldn't be the best option because that's for delicate surfaces. And this production tape, it's a little more sticky for like dusty outside crappy like areas. I like to use this orange stuff. Um, it's a little more expensive than like the Kelly Moore, like yellow contractor grade type stuff. Uh, this is like two bucks a piece. I think the other stuff's like a dollar a piece. I like the way this looks too, you know what I mean? All right, let's do this. So painting for me uh, was a side hustle for a really long time um, until it became like my main hustle, which was providing me with the majority of my income to support my family and pay for all my bills. Um, the way I got to that point was I had to dial in my pricing and had a price that way I can afford help. And that way at the end of the job, I didn't feel like, you know, I didn't make a profit because sometimes in the beginning I would paint a job. And even though I was making a thousand or two thousand dollars by the end of the job, it just really didn't feel like I made the money after all the expenses that would come out ahead of time, like IE gas, um, tools, because the tool cost is a lot. Some of these jobs, when it comes to the spray tips, you can't re you, you just don't buy one spray tip and it won't last you forever. The, the spray tips are only rated for a certain amount of gallons. So you constantly have to keep rebuying. I want to show you guys a little part. Um, I'm going to bring in the sound here in a little bit and it's going to be a little loud, but I want you to hear a big old fat drop fell and it was loud. <laughs> oh man, it's a big drop. Look at that sucker. Oh geez. Dude, I swear, dude, never failed. So as you can tell by my reaction, I was pretty bummed out and I'll tell you exactly why. Check this out. So literally I say this all the time and it's probably why it continues to happen. But no matter what, if you have not done your proper prep, every time there's a drip, it's gonna find the one little spot that's not wrapped. Look, I got drops all the way right here. We got drops all the way on the ground, but Somehow this one got pulled up and look where that drop just went <sighs> Like are you kidding me like you landed exactly next to the drop good thing It's hot once it dries we could just scrape it off with the wire brush But man seriously So I know there's some of you asking probably why I'm not using a small roller while painting the fascia board here Sometimes I choose to just use a three inch brush, a purdy brush. I like a blue bristle stiff brush for the outside of extra, extra rigid to push the paint around. Now you can use a roller, but what I've learned sometimes with the roller, and this is especially true during the heat, is once you put the paint on, you, you almost like are putting it on and pulling it off and putting it on and pulling it off. And with the brush, you're able to really lay on a fat coat. Also, to address what I was saying before the big fat paint drip fell down, um, if you guys are interested in how I dialed in my pricing, I have created like an all-inclusive estimating guide. And if you guys are interested in that, 
to you know maximize your profits i'll leave a link in the description below and hopefully that could help you out because it's really helped me out dial in my business and able to afford help thanks so much for sticking around to the end you guys and pretty soon we'll be bringing back in some more side hustle content subscribe if you haven't already and give me a thumbs up if you like this video and i'll see you in my next video peace